All right. I, I need to do at least one of these a week. Here comes Katrina Pearson. And, you know, you got to give it to her. She's a heck of a spokeswoman for Trump. But she doesn't answer questions either. She does a heck of a job on uh, doing what Ted Cruz does, which is uh, turn around and take a question and move it completely away from the subject matter uh, that's being questioned. So here comes Katrina. Katrina Pearson is national spokesperson for the Trump campaign. Katrina, always good to see you. Thanks for being with me. Hi, great to be here. Uh, why can't Donald Trump settle on one answer and just admit that he answered in artfully uh, and leave it at that? Why try to claim that it was edited when we know that was not the case? Well, I think a lot of this is stemming from the actual media fallout. Um, at first, there were reports that Mr. Trump called for an outright ban of abortion, which was simply not true. Um, and then secondly, he did clarify the statement when it came to this, this hypothetical context of illegal abortions, which even today in the reporting, uh, the media, including this network, has been saying that Donald Trump said that women should be punished for having an abortion, not an illegal abortion, which was exactly the context. So when you have a lot of confusion in media headlines, you're going to get different responses. But the, but, but the fact that he said we... And See, but she didn't answer the question because everybody and their brother knows that MSNBC did not edit that tape. So here, here comes Craig Melvin trying to bring her back to it again. Right. The tape, that's not true. And the campaign has yet to acknowledge that it's not true. And so I wanted to give you the opportunity of saying, you know what, we were wrong. You guys didn't edit the, the, edit the tape. Well, honestly, I don't know if the tape was edited, but if there was someone saying that Donald Trump called for... Now, she knows damn well that tape wasn't edited because you know the Trump people went completely all over that tape trying to come up with uh, this bullshit excuse that the tape was edited. So she she saw the damn tape. Half the, half the world saw that damn tape. An abortion ban, then something definitely went wrong, and I'm happy to go back and check and make sure for you. Uh, yeah, and after she goes back and checks to make sure, you're not going to hear another word about that tape because something else is going to pop up within the next couple of days. We should also let viewers know, by the way, that the tape is, uh, the exchange itself is up on MSNBC.com. They can watch it. Um, I, I, let's talk about these, these poll numbers. Sure. I'm sure you've seen these uh, poll numbers specifically among female voters. Doesn't matter which poll it is, at least two-thirds of women say they find Donald Trump unfavorable. The Washington Post says your candidate could be the most unpopular in history. Mitt Romney's unfavorables with women, just over 50% he lost. How do you win an election with unfavorable numbers uh, north of 70% with female voters? Well, first, I think that number will definitely change. But secondly, I would Based like to what? point out... But secondly, I'd like to point out that this is not your typical election cycle, and we're still reporting based upon conventional wisdom of previous election cycles. Mr. Trump's negatives were high at the beginning of the Republican primary, and he turned that around. He's going to do the same in the general election, and I'll also point out that the unfavorable numbers, Hillary Clinton and even Ted Cruz are still upside down in that area. We're going to have at least six months to get out there with Mr. Trump's policies to make America great again and convince women that he is the best decision in 2016 to get the economy turned around, to get education back to Precisely the states. Precisely how? And how does he go order. about? We're not, I mean, we're talking north of 70 percent, Katrina. I mean, you've been in the political game a long time. Those are substantial unfavorables. How does he turn it around in five or six months when his numbers seem to be going south, especially in Wisconsin? He hasn't picked up a single point since the, uh, the, the last Marquette poll in February. Well, he's going to continue to campaign. He's going to get out there and talk about his message. And more importantly, lifting the veil on Hillary Clinton. Hillary Clinton is no champion of women. We're but see, that's the problem. He's not running against Hillary Clinton right now. He's running against Ted Cruz and uh, Kasich. And their numbers, even though Ted Cruz is, he's a net uh, unfavorable. He's not that bad. And Kasich is a positive. So, you know, she keeps pivoting over to Clinton, and Clinton's not their opponent at the moment. It's the other two guys that are in the uh, GOP uh, nominating process. So, Katrina, smart woman that she is, pivots away from the actual uh, situation into a uh, potential Hillary Clinton situation.
going to have an opportunity to go head to head with Hillary Clinton and women are going to make a decision on the policies that are best for women. Not a personality conflict, not some, some politically correct campaign, but to issues that actually affect them and their families. Not just women. Unfavorable numbers high among other groups as well. Washington Post, ABC News just released uh, these poll numbers from earlier this month. About three quarters of moderates say they have an unfavorable view of Mr. Trump. The same goes true uh, for folks 18 to 24, uh, African American voters, Hispanic voters, even a majority of white evangelical Protestants say they view him unfavorably according to these poll numbers. How does he possibly beat Hillary Clinton, assuming he gets the nomination, how does he do it with numbers like that? Well, simply because polls are just snapshots in time. And if you look at the elections we've already had, even with high unfavorability numbers, people are voting for Mr. Trump, whether it's young people, evangelicals, even moderates, like you mentioned. Mr. Trump is winning those populations in states that we have that have had votes already. He's not winning minority in voters. General. He's not winning any minority voters. Yes, he is. He, the majority... I, I have look Katrina, in Florida, named... look, in, look in, in, in Nevada. He won the Hispanic vote in Nevada. He, came in... he won the Hispanic vote of the Hispanic uh, uh, Republicans. He didn't win the total number of Hispanics in Nevada because the majority of Hispanics in Nevada are Democrats. So yeah, she's right. He won, He came in second actually with the Republican Hispanics in Nevada and that was only 780 votes uh, that he received. But there is no way in this lifetime or the next that he's gonna win the Hispanic vote, the, the overall Hispanic vote in Nevada or any other uh, major uh, area. And if, as you can see in um, this uh, clip right here, he has an 85% unfavorable rating nationally with Hispanics. So, you know, she's spinning, she's spinning like a top, but you know, the numbers don't lie. And uh, somebody told me the other day that uh, uh, Donald Trump was gonna win African Americans. How the fuck is he gonna win African Americans when he's got an 80% unfavorable rating? So, you know, that, that's bullshit. Donald Trump's only hope is with white men. And as with all the uh, white women, with all the other minorities lumped in together, he's got no shot. This could, if he gets the nomination and, they, and runs against either Clinton or Sanders, this is gonna be a Republican loss of epic proportions. Second in Puerto Rico, came in second in Florida, for crying out loud. Mr. Trump is winning voters. It's a very small percentage of the GOP elected. But he's ago. winning, but he is winning those people. And what's gonna happen in the general, when we can get to focus on general election topics, you're gonna to see those numbers change. No way. Let's, let's talk about uh, what seems to become a, a huge shock of conversation, not just inside the Beltway. A lot of folks starting to pay attention to the fight over delegates. Reports out today that delegates are ready to flee Donald Trump at a contested convention in Cleveland. More than 100 poised to break uh, from him on a second ballot. Despite winning Louisiana, the campaign poised to get fewer delegates there. Uh, the same could very well be true in Massachusetts. There's a fight for delegates in that state now as well. If your campaign doesn't win on the first ballot, what makes Donald Trump better positioned than a John Kasich or a Ted Cruz at, at winning a drawn-out convention? Well, we do have teams on the ground, despite what the reports say. I mean, we've been hearing for a very long time that Donald Trump doesn't have a ground game, and yet he's winning. Uh, delegates are the name of the game in this race, and we are competing accordingly. Uh, despite what these reports say, uh, we are confident moving forward, and I know everyone's talking about Wisconsin being the, the game changer when the reality is every state after that is really poised for Donald Trump. We are confident we are going to get the delegates so that it doesn't go to a second ballot. You have to win 60% of all outstanding delegates if you guys drop the ball Tuesday in Wisconsin. Donald Trump can do that. Donald Trump will absolutely be able to do that. I'm very confident, yes. All right. Katrina Pearson, Trump campaign spokeswoman with us from Dallas, Texas. Katrina, thank you so much for your time. Great Have to a be fantastic here. weekend. Thanks. Katrina is delusional, but that's what she gets paid for. So you got to admit, she, she can spin with the best of them.